Alright, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan and today we're going to do a, another review, uh, this time on a band called Meadows End and their forthcoming album The Grand Antiquation coming out on March 4th this year. Um, so yeah, this is going to be put on Black Lion Records. Um, excellent kind of uh, black and death and melodic and atmospheric kind of music from Sweden. Uh, lots of pretty decent metal bands out there. Uh, but yeah, so if you don't know who uh, Meadows End are, uh, you wouldn't be the first person because I had no idea who these guys were until Oliver kind of showed them to me and started like promoting them around. Uh, but they are a symphonic, melodic death metal band from Sweden that started in 1997 and this will be their fourth album so yeah they got three more albums before this to check out uh, so quite a bit um, here's the inside of the, the thing here kind of a, uh, an interesting reddish orangish salmon color and then a black and gray disc here uh, and, then a, and then a super super thick booklet in there that just makes this thing puff out but hey uh, that's the band there, if the single focus, excellent. Um, so yeah, let's let's talk about this uh, this band. Um, uh, symphonic death metal is definitely not something that I'm really really familiar with or listen to that often. So uh, yeah, um, it wasn't something that I would probably have known about for those reasons alone, and it's probably not something that I would be rushing out to buy. Uh, because my tastes in death metal are normally like slam, maybe the odd brutal death metal, even the odder old school death metal. Um, my tastes more lean to like blackened death metal and, and, and stuff like that sometimes. Um, and, and less so melodic or symphonic death metal. So, uh, this is a very interesting album to try and review, considering that's not really my taste in metal. However... I think I'm pretty good at putting biases and, and personal tastes aside and actually, you know, getting into the meat of the music and kind of analyzing it thusly. Anyways, enough babbling on. Uh, the members in this band are Johan Brandberg on vocals, Robin Matson on keyboards, and there's a lot of them. Uh, Jan Meli or Mele? Mahil? I don't fucking know, dude. Sorry, I don't speak Sweden. Swedish. Uh, on guitar... Mats Healy, Helly on bass, and Daniel Tiger on drums. That's a killer name, bro. Um, so yeah, that's that's the band members. Let's get into breaking down what all we're listening to when it comes to this. Uh, let's start with the vocals as usual. And they are a kind of mid to low pitch, raspy style of growl. Uh, they performed really well and kind of on the same mix as the keyboards. Um... And it's above the guitars a bit as well. So, yeah, you're going to be hearing this, like I said, on the same level as the keyboards for the most part and just above the guitars. Uh, the, the vocals are performed consistent throughout, uh, there, but there's also some kind of sparse, gravelly parts where the vocals get a little deeper and grittier, uh, i.e. the song called The Non-Dreaming Eye. And there's even kind of momentary minor peaks to like higher pitch vocals uh which, which is nice that there's like the, the, the tiny little variations here and there so all in all you know pretty well performed vocals uh suited the music so you know good job there uh as for the guitars they were kind of medium level in the mix kind of somewhat buried under the keyboards. I mean, you can still understand what's going on here and there if you're really trying to pay attention to what the guitars are doing, but if you're just blanket listening and taking everything in, uh, it's a little bit hard to hear what's going on sometimes. Uh, but when you did hear them, they're, they're kind of like these full, warm, fuzzy, rumbling tone for guitars. Uh, the riffs included some chuggy palm mutes, some melodic and grandiose riffs, uh, there's even some kind of bouncy string skipping riffs here and there. Uh, there's there's definitely some melancholic power chords being played. They really want to get you in the feels and, and kind of like get your mood going. 
Um, there's also some kind of slow, soulful, solo-y type work here and there too. So there, there's a bit going on with the guitars. There's um, uh, probably a lot more going on than it's really easily picked up because of how much keyboards there is. But yeah, uh, from where I'm standing, I think they were performed well. Uh, the guitarist definitely knows what they're doing and it's pretty, you know, well recorded so anyways uh now for the bass can't say anything about it because it was completely buried below the guitars and even further buried behind the keyboards so let's talk about the keyboards in that case uh basically a, a, a just giant blanket and a fog overlaying uh the entire like album and all the songs uh just full of like atmosphere and melodies sometimes it sounds like a piano sometimes it sounds like a uh, like a, a choir voice effect going on. Uh, they're definitely the, the forefront of the album and songs. And uh, they're, they're too high in the mix, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I have a, a, a somewhat biased against symphonic or keyboard elements, but I just, I feel like they're just too in your face for the mix. And the, uh, it just kind of is a little bit overbearing. Uh, not not to say that the the keyboards isn't talented. That the keyboard work is talented and does fit the music. However, it just has that wall of sound, and once again, just kind of overtakes everything else. Uh, let's go on to the drums. the The drumming is about medium level in the mix. It's kind of just under or on par with the keyboards. Uh, the guy does some great fills. He's very quick and accurate on the drums. Uh, definitely a talented drummer indeed he uh, has some you know decent kick and snare sounds and the uh the pounding and and the the driving force of the drums definitely gives the songs a little bit of some power and just a teeny bit of like like oomph to it or otherwise would probably just kind of be a little uh a little less bitey now uh, the cymbals and hi-hat work though kind of get washed out with the keyboards i would like to hear a little bit more specific you know hi-hat sounds a little more cymbal sounding uh i'm one that has a preference for like those like bell and ride ticks and stuff like that so very specific drum noises i like to hear in in metal and they just kind of weren't there so you know but overall the drums were you know pretty damn good uh let's talk about some of my favorite tracks on here uh, one definitely being the non-dreaming eye which is track five has some you know interesting and some minor vocal variations here and there like i mentioned before he gets a little bit grittier and a little bit deeper growls and then in the same song he kind of gets a little bit higher closer to maybe some black metal vocals but not quite so at least there's some vocal variation in that song that i enjoyed and, and the riffs that i heard were also really good and then number four being Knight's Bane, which has that kind of death clock riff in it uh, that is there and that I haven't talked about yet because that's in my overall thoughts. But there, there's a bit of a death clock riff going on in that song. And there's even kind of a surprise like female vocal segment, which kind of added to it and was a bit of a uh, like intriguing new thing to the, you know, album altogether. So anyways, speaking of overall thoughts, let's let's kind of dive into what some of my thoughts were to this. Um, Meadow's End kind of has similar feels to Amon Amarth at times, sometimes Demi Borgir, even Nightwish at times. Like these three bands kind of, I feel like maybe were an inspiration to these guys or just kind of had their own like sound that just kind of ended up uh, rising through, you know, some of these guys, uh, composition. And I don't know if it was intentional or if it's just because of the, the, the extreme, you know, genre of symphonic and melodic elements that that kind of sounds like what it sounds like. But yeah. So if you're a fan of Amon Amarth and Demi Borgir and Nightwish, Meadows ends the grand antiqu antiquation has that in there. Um, the songs are very epic and kind of medieval sounding uh perfect for like like a, a soundtrack to world of warcraft or lord of the rings so if you're like fans of that kind of stuff you should probably enjoy this album 
feels like you're kind of going off to fight a, a giant battle with axes and archers and and magic and and you know like horse-drawn buggies and shit like that so yeah it does have that kind of like really grandiose feel to it um and like i said there's even like a slight death clock riff uh here and there mostly like i said in knight's bane uh as for the production on this it's a very high production level uh very clean uh very solid very like like loud and big sounding so yeah it sounds like they spent a fuck ton of money on this album and for someone who might be trying to dip their toes into extreme metal or death metal or, or anything of the like this seems like a very you know you know nice introduction to that without too much like like super duper extreme stuff something that's off-putting this is like a somewhat safe introduction to extreme metal so if that's you and you're kind of looking like fuck how do i get into this without dipping into something that's like hammer smash face or or fucking uh uh you know i don't know like <laughs> really lo-fi uh black metal or, or something where it's just consistent blast beats and and fucking uh double kicks and just undecipherable gutturals Th this this album will definitely be something to ease you into it uh or, or if you're trying to get your girlfriend into it, like extreme metal or metal this might ease her into it i think the only thing that might put her off of this is maybe like the growls and even then they're not tame but they're not like indecipherable gutturals that are going to scare your your girlfriend away so this is something that i think would definitely be be good to you know starters to like extreme metal and stuff like that so it does have it's like really good qualities and good good reasons to go out and buy this album for sure uh however i do have a few kind of uh you know weaknesses that i could point out and some improvements that could be made to this just for my own personal kind of taste uh, and let's kind of dive into that because there I've got a few who here uh, I would have loved to hear more of what the guitars were doing and The keyboards just kind of buried too much of the overall song writing like If anything was the easiest to pick out what was going on It was the drums because the drums and the keyboards are kind of like here and here the drums may be kind of wavering a bit um, But you know, that's how kind of it was. Uh, I mean they might as well as well not even had a bassist because you, you couldn't hear them in it. Like, it's, it, he may have added to the overall like low rumbling sound to the album, but unless you have a mix of this where he's taken out of it, you'd never know because in my ears, I couldn't ever hear the guy. So I feel sorry for him <laughs> a bit for this recording, unless he knows that he's just there to kind of add to the overall low tone. I don't know, bud. I think you got shortchanged a bit here. Um, give a short section to the other. Yeah, yeah. There should have been like a, a short section at least uh, in each song. I mean, not every song, but like in one or two songs for like the bass to have kind of like a solo-y type of moment so they could shine and, and be recognized that they're actually there. The guitars should have had like a part where the keyboard just stops playing for a fucking second or two and he just like, not shreds, but has some really cool moment to shine in there that goes, yeah, like he's there, he definitely is needed and he can, you know, prove his salt, you know? And, and the drums even give the dude like, a couple of seconds to shine with the drums and fills and or even like a cool like really technical beat or something just each instrument other than the keyboard should have had an opportunity there and then uh the vocalist could have had some more variations i mean unless they're just strictly going for the just kind of raspy you know mid-level tone growls throughout the whole thing maybe consider doing some like even like deeper or even higher moments some some like dare i say gutturals or or even like clean vocals but like low like commanding low vocals in there you don't have to go like like fucking toilet sounds and you don't have to do like black metal shrieks but just more variations because the stuff that he did in non-dreaming eye was like a tease like i could see that he could do other stuff other than just like that one medium style of vocal so yeah, that could have been in there, and yeah, I feel like this album could have had a little bit more 
little teeth to it. A little bit more edge, maybe not so clean, polished of a production. I don't know. Uh, like, turn, turn, like, you're turning the keyboards from here to about here, maybe just under the guitars. That, like, the guitars need to be the thing that I hear the most. And then the vocals, like, the keyboards being, like, way up here in the mix is just... It's washing everything out and just plucking all the teeth out of it. So, I don't know. Maybe consider that next time. Uh, and finally, some of the songs kind of felt like rinse, wash, repeat uh, formula. Kind of samey, samey. The only ones that I really noticed a huge difference in, like I said, was Night's Bane or Non-Dreaming Eye for the couple of reasons I gave. But the rest of them, you could have just said, you know... Uh, Storm of Perdition, you could have told me, was The Insignificance of Man, or Zvept I Sorgplad, was I Still a Vomd Vandra. Like, and I would have been like, yeah, sure, totally, because there's nothing in these songs, from what I heard, that really stands out and separates them from the pack. So, yeah. Anyways, this is a really long review, but I had a lot to say about it. Thank you, uh... Oliver for sending this to me. It definitely gave me some perspective and tested my metal as a reviewer to kind of put my, my, my thinking cap on and my biases and my personal tastes aside to actually just review the, the music as it is. Um, with that being said, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It's not something that I would go out of my way to purchase, but I still recommend, you know, you giving it a shot and picking up a copy if you deem it worthy of being purchased. It's, uh, you know, a really well put together album. And these guys obviously put, you know, effort into doing it and recording it. They definitely put the bucks into recording it. You can hear it in the production sound. So, yeah, I'm Jesse Morgan, and you should probably purchase this album. Take care. <laughs>